Welcome to Finding Roots, the show where I discover the diverse worlds and cultures of renowned musicians, delving into their unique stories while uncovering the passions and motivations that drive them in their musical journeys while recreating flavors that are significant in their lives. Today, I have invited violinist Elena Baeva, who made her New York Philharmonic solo debut in 2023, and whose beautiful chamber album, Fantasy, was released earlier this month. Listen to Elena's story and find out how important borscht is in Ukrainian culture. Thank you so much for coming over today and Thank chatting you. with me. That's so. a treat to have such an invitation. <laughs> to see you cooking and oh. to, to share these great times of preparing, it's oh. amazing. What we decided was we should cook something that had a lot of memories for you. And it took a little while to come up with what we were going to make, actually, didn't it? Well, yeah, my, my story is quite complicated. I would say it takes a little bit of time to just to list all the places I was living in. Yeah. So I grew up, I was born in Kyrgyzstan, in the mountains. Oh, uh, really? I didn't know the, that, actually. Yeah, near the border with Uzbekistan. And so they have a civil war, I think, until now, if, even now wow. it's going on. So uh, it was a, a gorgeous place, so beautiful. I love mountains and, you yeah. know, it's just nature. And uh, my grandfather was a geologist. Oh, okay. So that was a great place for geologists. There was even a little town for geologists, for scientists. So that's why my parents ended up there. <laughs> my, yeah, my, my mother was born there. Okay. So, yeah. Um, and then there was a civil war when I was five. It was very dangerous to stay there. So we moved to relatives uh, to stay with my another grandmother in Kazakhstan, in Almaty. So that was another great five years there. And I started playing violin there, going to school. And then I moved to Moscow when I was 10 to study. Okay, okay. So was that already to study music at that point? Oh, yes, yes. I was 10 and I was quite advanced for 10 years old. That's why actually all my family decided to move because the professor invited me to study in the capital. So I'm very grateful to my parents also to move all the family. Of course, yeah, to like make yeah. the decision for a 10 year old. Like how crazy is that? That's quite amazing actually, isn't it? But that's of course the days when it was USSR. And so that was when we were talking about how there were often food shortages and things. Oh, yeah. So yeah, the, um, and the end of Soviet Union years, it was so, so difficult. Everywhere there was a shortage of food. But in Kyrgyzstan where we live, my grandmother had a garden. One of my uh, most, you know, fond memories of childhood of the right. first years is an enormous cherry tree <gasps> in the middle of our garden. It's like it's huge. I don't know if you watched uh, Totoro. Oh, uh, I movie. love Totoro. So of this course. kind of tree, you know, uh, the apricot trees, and my my father planted pomegranates there. No, it's, I didn't and realize it would be warm enough for pomegranates. It was very, well, for, like for it's, pomegranates. It's, very, it's this kind of climate. Yeah, it's okay. The south of Soviet Union, it's very, very hot in summers. Okay. And then you got snow in winters. Yeah. Oh, amazing. So it was so many fruits and fresh vegetables. And uh, another uh, f funny memory, you know, I, uh, like I don't really remember much stuff when I was until very five short. years old. Yeah, of course. So it's just very bright um, sparkles. Yes. So another one is that uh, we were living in a... Like uh, separate town, but it's not. It's kind of far from downtown. Of course, it's very close to mountains. So on the main street, which is uh, was not exactly near the house, um, every I think every morning. I don't remember how, but a few times a week at least, there was a man with a, how do you call it? He was carrying milk products. Oh, like a cart a, or yeah, some kind of. Cars. Cart or yeah. pulling. Oh, have fun. So, and he was oh, screaming for people to hear <laughs> him and to go buy stuff. And what he was screaming is Kaimak. So Kaimak was a very fat, very fresh sour cream. But very fat. It was so good. And then my grandma would make a fresh bread, which called uh, Lepeshka. Okay. In Russian, we spoke Russian uh, at home. and. Uh, in their own tandir, tandirze. Um, how do you say, the oven? Yeah, the tandoor oven. oven. It's like yeah, the, with, exactly. the, with the clay yes, sides, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah amazing. So they, they would do this round bread and put some black sesame on top as a decoration and I think for taste also. So that's very traditional for um, uh, 
uh, Middle Asia and um, we would eat it with kaimak. But so in the end, do you want to say what we what we chose? Like, oh, or, well, yes. you, you chose and I think it's such a great idea. Yeah, this kind of came also naturally after, you know, what, what should it be? Of course, it should be borscht. Yeah, of course, it should yes. be borscht. Yes. Exactly. Because borscht is a base. It's a base food. It's comfort food in any situation. So we're going to go pick the beets and, and from the garden, which I'm really excited about. So, uh, so yeah, so I wanted to show you around the garden and I, we can try to find some of the vegetables here. Let's get the beets first. So I think bees are quite ready. Oh, the pimentos, the padron. I, I remember after one festival in Spain, I was, we were just driving past padron village and I decided I just have to buy seeds <laughs> and I grow them on my balcony. It was amazing actually. Yeah, and then here we have some, uh, you see the Swiss chard? That was what I was thinking we could use as a bit of a substitute for the, right. um, for the cabbage. It? I'm going to get a couple different colors. I was growing yeah. up in the Middle Asia and my father, so he's half Russian, half uh, Polish, Ukrainian. Uh, he absorbed the culture of food in Middle from, Asia. From Middle Asia, yes. which is that interesting, interesting mix, mix of, uh, of uh, sort of really Asian, like sort of North Chinese sort of tastes yes. and stuff with like the sort of Western style as well, isn't it? It's like, yes. It's exactly. a fascinating area. It's, it's a great, great place for food um, discoveries. Yeah, Actually, absolutely. It's delicious everything they do there. I, is there anything that you would put in your soup? It's mostly bay leaves and also parsley, I think. A parsley, okay, yeah. cool. So I could maybe take a little bit of parsley to go in. So can I, can I try these leaves? Can you eat of it? Of course. How do you call it? So, so sorrel, sorrel, sorrel. I found a new Ukrainian recipe for sorrel soup, actually. It's the best. Is it? Okay, it is I really best. have to make it. It's you in the same book as the, as the borscht it's recipe. It's delicious. And then okay. you add an egg in the end. Mmm. So good, right? I'm going to take you know, one as well. I, I did not try it for 30 years. Really? More than that. Oh my gosh. I love it. Oh, it's so good. Mm. Here's what I have that um, I read was in the recipe, um, along with the beets and chard that we picked outside. There's like a really huge discussion over the correct way to cut the vegetables. So there are lots and of now I'm a bit terrified that we're going to do this all wrong. I would say when I was 10, I moved from the most warm and generous place with most open people smiling and trying to be happy and trying to yeah. make everyone around happy in Almaty, in Kazakhstan. Mm. It's still like that, I think. Yeah. And I moved to Moscow, which was extremely, and is, I don't know how is it known, but it, it was so competitive. It was so right. hard. Mm. The atmosphere in the central music school I moved to study. It right. was the best school for musicians in the USSR. But still, you know, some, yeah, I quickly learned that life is not, <laughs> I mean, mm. also the age, you know, when I was 12, I really think it's really, difficult things is life and it's so hard it's so not such a fair hard, yes i mean i just realized that life is so not fair yep absolutely. and i i was kind of an introvert mm. i was practicing a lot i had a very good friend at school she was Alice. fantastic a girl from uh, one of one of five children okay families yeah and then you know i was concentrating of course on playing violin i was quite a uh, rough and not wild um teenager but i was very honest and I, I value it a lot of you know it's like very authentic and being different is mm. it's not bad it's it's like it's yeah good. that's amazing but then, yeah then I mean, then it was you can really because then you can actually i don't know if you if you have to if you always just follow the rules 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 you never learn to have your own voice as a musician as well yes. isn't it yes, so exactly, yeah. so you have to have that um sense of like independent individual self and yeah, and right. who are you
you know, I'm all, every time I hear you, I'm just thinking, oh my gosh, you know, this is somebody <laughs> with such an amazing voice. And but I think it's because you're you're who you are. You have like yeah. so much to say in in so positive ways. And also Easy. connection with music and food is, you know, when I was a child, I was so pumped with all this amazing food around in Middle yeah. Asia with the climate and fresh oh fresh vegetables. And we didn't live in a downtown, so we didn't have this terrible lines for uh, every. Yes, every I wondered piece of about food. that because I mean we used to yeah. see those photos sometimes. Yes, my husband yeah. Vadim was growing up in Kiev, the okay. capital. Yes. You don't have a garden in a, in a yeah, capital. Yeah, of right? course. Of so course. it really was very different for him. He does remember his lines. Yeah. And uh, I felt like I, I took so much and absorbed so much. And then I feel this need to, to give it back somehow. Mm. And so music became kind of a way of sharing Sharing, sharing this generosity. Try to, try, to, try, yeah, try to give back. So we've had this discussion about the cutting. And I know Vadim gave you very <laughs> unclear <laughs> instructions you know, on his yes, favorite way, I, right? I feel this <gasps> cutting. I have to cut it in the right way. And I was like, <laughs> and that's which one is that? Because it's very, very distinctive. Okay. And uh, I call I called Vadim yeah. because he, he learned from his mom how to of do course. this. So what did your mom say? He said it should be finely chopped. Finally, 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 okay. very finely. Okay. And then, but then he said, "But you know, to be honest, I hate it when it's long and fine and too fine. <laughs> I rather prefer when it's quite a bigger." So, is there anything that you remember from those years in Moscow that you're like, "Oh, I kind of remember this, and I do did like that, like something like, especially as a kid, you know, like you have oh, all yes. these like sweets or." No, actually, Moscow was. Um, we didn't really go out much sure. because, well, '95 we moved. 1995. Yeah. It was not as much hunger. Anymore. Yep. Okay. And it was very good farmers' products on okay. the far on the markets. Okay. Uh, but we didn't really go out yep. much, so it was mostly uh, what we brought as recipes. Oh, okay. So from, you're still making the same stuff yes, from home. Yes. Yes. A lot of those, and uh, of course there were some substitutes. But later I started to go outside, and uh, I discovered how many different um, kitchens, cuisines are represented. Ah, yeah. It's like I discovered the Georgian cuisine. Oh my gosh, and Georgian Armenian food. food. Yes, Armenian yeah. food. Armenian food it's, as well. It's quite different. Yeah. And it's amazing. It's really fascinating. Yep. So actually, when I was studying in the conservatory, we had the, on the same street as the conservatory, like a few minutes walk. Mm -hmm. It was a Georgian place. And uh, every everyone was going there. It was not expensive. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. So it had kind of a restaurant for more... Uh, important meals. It was it was great. Yeah, that was one of the highlights actually. As we're doing the potatoes, <laughs> I'm watching you, and you're going like, ah, oh, but this was too long. Ah, oh, this was more fine. And it's like, you know, it is that perfectionism that we all have, isn't it? It like, yes. drives all of us crazy. Yes, it's being. I think it's also being sensitive to endless the possibility of endless improvement. Exactly. Right in music. Absolutely. But what is I had? I well, it took so much time for me to understand that there is no perfection in music. Absolutely. I just very recently, I kind of installed this idea in my head. Fantastic. Because like, we have to let it go, right? It's oh, yeah. Like, well, it doesn't exist. Because it doesn't exist. Yes. Absolutely. I mean, it's the same thing with like when you cook something, yeah. you are going to end up with endless possibilities as well. And all of them right. could be good. I mean, hopefully this is... <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. Like, we hopefully <laughs> this is good. It's pretty good. Actually, when you are not planning things too much, yeah. the feeling of... Oh joy gosh. and fulfillment when it turns out good is so yes. much more than when everything is settled and you kind of it's when it's finished it's great yeah if everything was according to the plan it's great but then you didn't you had no moment for spontaneity yes exactly i think it's also very it's like cooking is making something in a moment yeah and music too and music as well it's one of the arts very rare um actually activities of a human being when you do something with a moment you create something unique Exactly. Yeah. And there's like, and you never know what will go right, what will go wrong. And if something does go a little bit wrong, how do you like make that actually something beautiful? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And that's yeah. so beautiful. True. But, but I think people don't always realize that with classical music, because everything is much more planned there, that actually mm -hmm. we still have that, that we have these moments like where you have to just make a decision. And trust yourself. And trust yourself. And important. that's the big thing, is mm. it's like we have to learn to trust ourselves. Yes. Because I think we actually are almost trained to not trust ourselves. When you're a child, of course. Exactly. It's very important to have a good teacher, actually. Yes. Because, yeah, because you, you, you're being directed so much. It's such a hard activity to play an instrument. Yeah. I mean, for children, it can be just play, and that's the best. 
Yes. But I mean, if you look back, it's really hard to learn all those things in the right way. Exactly. So yeah, to have someone who guides you in a positive way and who who give you gives you joy in also making mistakes sometimes. Yes. That's very Absolutely. important. It's like in life. Yeah. Yeah. It's exactly. Like and be like, oh, what did you learn from that? Not like, oh, that was terrible and let's feel miserable about it. But like, what did you learn from it? Like, yeah. that was the thing that happened, you yeah. know, and just yeah. be okay with it. You know, I just remembered, now we were starting to talk about my first years and I remembered how uh, we were hiding underneath um, the ground in a garden. How do you call it? Like, a, like, did you have a cold cellar, like where it was cold to store cellar. vegetables and yeah, stuff? Yeah, just a hole in the ground. Yeah, yeah, a, yeah, yeah, with yeah. a lid. Oh with my a gosh. Lid. Yeah. So we had to hide there because it, it was very dangerous outside. There were people wow. with uh, weapons and uh, because of the civil war. Yeah. So oh I, I don't remember being scared, but when we were there, I remember being surrounded suddenly but so, by so many glass jars oh, with okay. preserves and uh, all sorts of things my grandma would do. Amazing. For winter time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, incredible. So I was oh, that is where it all comes from, you know? <laughs> yeah, oh, that's just an amazing memory though. So after you were at the uh, music school in Moscow, like what, what ended up happening after that? Like how long did you stay there? What, till what age? So actually, um, uh, music school yeah. it was uh, until um, 17 years old. Okay. And when I was 17, I entered Moscow State Conservatory. Okay. Uh, which is the conservatory, yes. Well, I got master's degree. And uh, when I was 22, I finished it. And I didn't do postgraduate because it was, at that place, it was not uh, very interesting for me. So I, but I had, I had many outside influences. I had okay. uh, a teacher in France. Okay. Yeah, I had a teacher in France um, when I was living in Charter. Okay. In Paris, I had lessons, uh, which uh, was, which were very important for me as an insight of, from different, you know, uh, different way of teaching and playing mm, Western yeah, exactly. music, classical music, for example, yes, like Mozart and Beethoven. Yeah. Very useful. Mm. And uh, also, I had. Um, I went to master classes since I was uh, 16, a summer okay. school in Israel. And oh, that was amazing because it was like around 12 teachers from all parts of the world. Okay. Uh, fantastic uh, players, um, like 50 violinists, you know, every summer. Wow. And I was going there for seven years. It's okay. my second home. And I learned so much there. Uh, there was also a Rolex program, which chose me as one of the candidates for their mentor and protege. Oh, wow. Program. I yeah. didn't know that I was even a thing. So I was one of the three students which were sent to, I was 21, 20, 22 years old. Okay. To, sent to um, Canada and to New York to have lessons with Pinkas Tuckerman. And so we met and I played for him uh, in the few master classes. But he was famous uh, for his way of teaching. Okay. Of, uh, which he also told, told me, he, he told, you know, I was playing concerts already by that age. I was yeah, doing yeah. tours. I was yeah, quite, yeah. Uh, I loved, I had a lot of repertoire. Yeah. So I felt like a musician not as much as a student anymore. So I, I thought that something interesting. Yeah. So what he told me, you know, he told me, you are a baby in music. You don't understand anything. You have to play scales mm. for half year at least. Mm. And then if you want to play until you are like 50, 60, 70 years old, if you want to have healthy body and have healthy habits, you have to start it all, all over. Yeah, so actually I was so not convinced and I was not ready to... To listen. No. Some yeah. people did it. Some people. Changed it. Yeah. Changed the habits, changed the way of playing and they're fine, they're perfect. But for me, at that moment, I was, I was not willing to You just that. weren't ready no. or... Yeah. So tell me, so, okay, so you went on to the study in Moscow and then you were studying with Pinkus Zuckerman in New York. But then, I mean, my, like, I think I knew you, of you, when you were, got, were, had the world prize winner for the Queen Elizabeth competition, I think. Oh, I was a laureate of Queen A laureate, Elizabeth. yeah. 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 I, I, it was in 2005. It was one of those competitions I really wanted to do my, my own without any guidance, any okay. um, teacher involved. And uh, I was brave enough to put Schubert Sonata in the final. <laughs> Because I just love this music. If nobody told me, don't do that. Right, right, right. <laughs> Schubert's and, and not is so that? most introverted and uh, intimate yeah. uh, yeah, setting. Yeah. And then you have this TV and the queen sitting and so much oh pressure. So that was, I mean, normally people wouldn't do it. <laughs> but I just okay. love this music okay. so much. <laughs> well, that's that's the reason to do it, isn't it? It's like what brings yeah. you joy. And, you know, you always do the thing that's like, you know, that you, you feel can 
Yes. You reach yourself as yes. well as the others. You I know. learned a lot. So how did you end up in Luxembourg? Oh, actually, I just wanted to move out of Moscow and I was so influenced by my time in Chartres in France, yep. in Paris. Uh, I really fall in love with everything French, the way of life and the um, a way of eating, a way of mm. enjoying life, and uh, I was really fascinated. I learned to make onion soup. Oh, in great. this French family, they taught me how to do the um, pâté de lapin. Wow. I mean, this um, even we did for gras once, I think. Wow. And, but, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> but yeah, it's a really, really um, groundbreaking thing. So I really wanted to learn French language also because I didn't know any and we spoke English. Yep. And I felt like I, n I really want to learn French. So, but France was quite difficult to, to move and then ambassador of Luxembourg in Russia. He was living in Moscow and he was going to concerts. He was a mellow one, a wonderful person, a friend of uh, some great musicians. And he, he told, but why, why you want to move to Luxembourg? It's a great place. It's very well located. And he helped with paperwork. And it, oh, also, amazing. it also was very good for my, uh, at that time, husband's business. So it was actually perfect. It was much better than France on the States or anything. Okay. Perfect. So that's pretty random because there are not many musicians living in Luxembourg. Yeah. That's why I'm so happy to meet you whenever we yes. have chance. <laughs> so I thought we could just have a little bit. Well, we finished up waiting for the borscht and wait for Vadim yes, and Leon please. to come. We could have pleasure. a little bit of this uh, gooseberry cordial. What did you, did you say you remember the name of it in Russian? Uh, Krzyżownik. Krzyżownik. Okay. Well done. Well, yes. Thank you. Musical ears. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, that sounds a little bit Polish. <laughs> So here, cheers. cheers. Thank you so, again so much for coming. I'm it's so really happy. nice. Yeah, I'm honored. So, oh no, my gosh, for me too. This is so cool. Tell me, tell me any interesting things that you had, like either growing up or, you know, or or even on tour as well. Because I mean, I know tour is like I've definitely had some really interesting things when I've been traveling. So. Absolutely, you know. But I, I think I'm well. I'm absolutely. Uh, very courageous in terms of trying new things. Amazing. And I think that comes from a variety of things I was exposed to as I was uh, very young. Mm. So until in, in Kyrgyzstan, where I, was, where I was growing up until five years old, there were so many really weird things um, uh, being taken as food and drinks. Cool. Like from a Western point of view, it's like one of the things I mentioned, it was fermented horse milk, but it's not just fermented horse milk. It's a uh, uh, the bag, the, um, it was fermented in a bag okay. made from sheep skin. Okay. So it just basically was just a sheep skin. Okay. And like a whole one and yeah, like open and then. Yeah, and then wow. they would ferment the um, horse milk in there so it get bubbly and sour. Okay. And I love to drink this. That's it's so interesting. So refreshing. You're, you're so courageous though, because like I, I love traveling and you know, I'm normally quite good, but then there's just sometimes you come up against something like, <gasps> I'm not gonna have it. As a snack, I loved um, to use this. You know, they made um, oh, how do you call it? They would dance the milk into um, tvorok. Okay. As you call it? Oh, it's like a cheese almost. Is that yeah, right? it's like yeah, a cheese, okay, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. They, they would harden it and dry it. So it was okay. a dried, sour bowls of dried cheese, basically. Okay, okay, okay. And it was the perfect snack. Okay. And I think it, it's a lot of salt. It has a lot of yeah. salt, so it's good for dehydration. Yeah, for dehydration, during of the course. Summer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it also has a protein. And mm. I mean, it was so good. I really miss it. Mm. I would love to hear it. It's, uh, it was called kurt. Kurt, okay. Kurt. It's because we don't always get to see loads of things on mm. tour. It's like you, you end up having the food is the memory that you have of a certain place. But if you say to me, you know, what was, I don't know, uh, Hong Kong, mm. then it's mm. like I'm thinking, ah, well, you know, I remember X, Y, and Z, but I remember this that I ate because exactly because it brings you back to that place. This is so, so correct. It's very, very right. Because for musicians, yes, we come there. Sometimes there is a jet lag. You yeah. have a rehearsal, you have to prepare. You, you, sometimes you see some things around. Yeah. If you're lucky, you try. You always yes, try. Rehearsal, yeah, yeah, yeah. rehearsal is good. You know, you have just yes. one day or maybe two days. Yes. And then you have a concert. And then after the concert, you, with you, all your feelings so open and exposed, it's uh, after, you know, feeling of flying, making music, being free. And then you meet people. And then everybody has this special feel of, sharing something very exactly very precious exactly. and then you go eat together yes and this is a memory which actually shapes our understanding of culture also 
Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Isn't that true? It's so, yeah. so, so, so important. Yeah. yeah. And I think the way, especially if you're being hosted, then the what they're offering you, what they're doing for you, it's often like they're really trying to show you the best of their culture, yeah. you know? And so it's like you really get a special insight that if you're there as a tourist, actually you don't get that sometimes because you don't have somebody in local showing you. But when you're Absolutely. presenting a concert, usually we have that really lucky chance to have mm -hmm. somebody there hosting you saying, please let me show you what the best of our area is. In the short time you're here, we show you, we offer you yes. this. And it's really like a gift, you know. And um, so tell me, I know um, just before we eat, I just wanted to ask you about your, your project you just did with Vadim, the, the, the duo re um, recording. I mean, is that like kind of the most recent big project you've done or... Well, uh, it's actually one of the most important projects uh, yeah. so far because uh, we recorded a duo. Uh, yeah. CD with a great program about fantasies and fairy tales. Um, I love this program so much and it's such a treat to play with Vadim. Yeah. And uh, we had a dream conditions for recording it for Alpha Label, which is amazing and giving musicians all the possibilities so to fulfill amazing. their dreams. And I feel so, so, so lucky. So the release date is the February 24. Okay. And we have got a series of concerts around to, to promote and present the CD and uh, with the same program. So I'm, I'm so, so happy we did it. Another, um, another great project, which I am very, very excited is about um, recording Again, recording um, a CD with uh, Pavo Yarvi. We oh my just gosh. did um, recording with him and Doce Kamel Ferramani okay. in Bremen, yep. which is an amazing Fabulous orchestra. orchestra yeah, yeah. So we, we did Strauss Concerto, which is not being yeah, played so exactly. often. Yeah, exactly. I remember you you posted something on uh, Instagram just mm -hmm. saying, do you know what this is? And I I played it for a vi some violin players and they were like, I don't know what this is. Right. <laughs> because, you know? Yeah, people don't play it. Yeah. It's, you know, it's uh, Opus 8. It's a very young piece. Yep. Strauss was... 17 years old when he wrote wow. it. So, but you can hear already, it's a nice piece. It's a nice, mm -hmm. very classical piece, but uh, you can hear some typical Strauss language there. Yeah. And it's very difficult for violin. That's why people don't bother, mm -hmm. uh, usually. <laughs> right. <laughs> because uh, yeah, in order to make it sound uh, good, you have to put so much effort. Right. Just, just to make it sound good. Yeah, enough, yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. <laughs> And it's like, <laughs> yeah. But I played it for quite a while now, so I like I like very much the challenge to make it sound exceptional and yeah. beautiful because it deserves this it deserves music. more it's, it's a nice piece. Yeah. yeah. So what we uh, hope to complement it with Barto Concerto Number no. One. Great. And Barto was also very young mm. when he wrote this concerto, and it was support. It was believed to be lost for fifty years. Wow. Can you believe? Because wow, Bart wow. is a great story. Bardo uh, was in love with a violinist okay. named Steffi Geyer and she um, he presented this concerto for her as a sign of his affection yeah. but she was not feeling the uh, same. that she could accept it uh -huh. so she was not she would never perform it in his lifetime okay. and it believed to be lost until he was he passed away and she passed away and after 50 years it was found that he's in oh, her villa in her, in her villa so oh, it was premiered like yeah, 50 years after it was written, but it's such that's gorgeous it. music. Oh, I think I actually hear the door, so I think we can... Act I think yes. that's probably Leon and Vadim coming now, so we can actually eat our borscht finally and see Great. how that is. <laughs> it's just about the time. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> can you explain a little bit about this uh, salo? Salo. Oh, salo is an essential part of life in uh, Ukraine. And uh, everybody who tried salo, I think it, it's just uh, it's dreaming to try it again. So we have the borscht, which we're going to put the sour cream and the dill into the soup. We have these pickles that I got. We did um, ask if you would be happy to play one little thing. Maybe we can do it before we start to eat so we can yes. enjoy a couple minutes of your amazing <laughs> of music. So I just thought I can play a little excerpt of a Polish piece by Polish composer Grażyna Batsevich, named Polish Caprice. And uh, actually, it's uh, yeah, it's funny. Is that sound should be as thick as Ukrainian as a good Ukrainian borscht, <laughs> and as comforting. So I try.
more stories like this? Subscribe to my channel to discover other musicians and gain insight into their lives. <laughs>